Are we recording? Here we are. <laughs> so welcome everyone. Um, we have uh, Dave Marcello with us today. Um, and I think we may have a couple of other folks. Um, do, is there anyone else on Zoom who is not yet? Okay, great. Um, and I think, let's see. I was hoping to see Angela, but I know her schedule is a little dicey. So one, two, seven. Why am I? Who are we missing? Margaret. 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 Okay. So um, we usually review the agenda just to see if there are any additional items um, that anyone wants to add or if the order needs to be moved around. But any mention of that by the committee? Nope. Okay, so it will stand. And then we have a period of public comment, usually at the beginning. Um, but last time you were able to chime in. Dave, yes, yes. is there anything you would like to say at the start? To... Uh, no, I'll say. Okay, great. Glad you're with us. So moving into administrative items, um, we distributed the minutes of February 12th. Um, is there any correction noted or addition needed, or are we ready to um, approve those? Welcome, Angela. Hello. I, I'm driving, so staying off video, but I can hear and talk. <laughs> Excellent. Glad you're with us. Um, and just to let you know, we have in the room with us Dave Marcello, um, who joined us last month. And just joining us are Brian Banton and his wife, Nadia. I'm glad to have you with us. Welcome. Great. Um, so, great. So we're, we're going into, um, we're just mentioning the February 12th minutes. Um, and, and I've heard no corrections. So can we just approve those unanimously? Give me some nods. Great. We're assuming you're nodding, Angela. Okay. I'm nodding. <laughs> Thank you. And then we have a couple of ca um, calendar items. Um, our workshop on the 19th. Um, I'm assuming that on the 19th, we will have our hands full um, reviewing the revised uh, town center code, recode. Um, Leslie is going to be sending that to all of us, I think, by the end of today. Um, there are going to be still some bits uh, being worked on by, by um, Kirk, but all of the town center revisions have been made. So we'll be getting that um, and we'll have a week to look at it and we can deal with that next week. Um, so is there anyone here now who knows they? can't attend that workshop. Excellent. I we'll can't attend though. Okay. So we'll do our best to take good notes. <laughs> um, but you will get the draft. So if you're able to look at it, um, that would be that would be great. Um, I'll do that. Now so what, time what time is the workshop? What time is it's always workshop? four to five. Four to five. And it's on the nineteenth in March. Yep, yep. Okay. Third Tuesday. Yep, four to five, and you know it will just be the one hour. Um, when we meet with Leslie, it sometimes goes over, but okay. And um, we we've, we've been offered a select board workshop date, and this is a workshop to orient the select board to what's in the comprehensive plan, and then to focus a bit on um, on town center recode. And the date is May 2nd, the which would be the, the first meeting in May. All of the budget stuff and warrant will be done, right? 
So that should be a short agenda and we could do a workshop then. Looking at May 2nd, does that look like a date that most folks could make or not? No. So Rick can't make it. Anyone else? What, what time? Um, select board is 6.30. To, and the, the initial agenda is usually pretty short. Right. We'll, we'll intentionally keep it that way. So yeah. Maybe nothing, but if there's something that's time sensitive, it might be one or two short items. Like yeah. Stuff to grant or something. So our stuff would probably start no later than seven, probably quarter of seven. Probably more likely six forty. Six forty. Yeah. Yeah. May second. May second. Thursday, sure. May second. Is that the one that the uh, the high school people yeah. could come? Could come. Could come. Yeah. Right after I, I do. Yeah, it, it's not going to be focused just on on town center rico it will focus on all of the plan but that, that's a good that's a good time for anybody to come okay yeah yeah it's a remote access there will be remote access yeah. right yeah. yeah great um although i don't think they're recorded are they the they are they are workshops uh um, select board meetings are this may end up being both so probably oh, will be recorded. okay I think even if it wasn't normally, it's good for informational purposes. So yeah. Be so Rick, if it's remote, you could. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, when will that link? When will that link be sent out for that workshop? Um, usually make it like the week before, but and then we'll put it on the town website. Um, okay. So, um, moving into our next. Item. We're moving into recode update. And normally the first 10 minutes of the meeting are open to um, participant comments. Welcome, Brian and Nadia. Um, do you want to speak to the committee um, at this point? The, the rest of the agenda is very agenda specific. It's been posted um, for a week. So, um, and just as a way of background, um, although Brian and Nadia could not come to the property owners session, um, right after that, a lot of focus was given to the draft. And I think we've had probably somewhere between eight and 10 um, email exchanges, um, some very lengthy, and um, some in a, a a visit to the office. So I would suggest that it not all be rehashed unless that's really what you want, because it's a it's time sensitive. Sure. Great. All right. Um, thank you very much. My name is Brian Banton. This is my wife, Nadia Sellis. We live at 6 Elm Street in Topsom. It's the big yellow house on Elm Street, first one on the left. We're also the lucky owners of the corner lot. <laughs> Welcome to Topsom. That's that's us on the corner of Elm and Main. Um, so we're here really to talk about that particular parcel. Um, I guess first of all, I just wanted to say thank you um, to you guys. You know, most towns do a comprehensive plan and they stick it on the shelf, and not much happens. But Topsom's um, got this committee, and you guys are doing the hard work of making the comprehensive plan a reality. So thank you very much. Um, I just want to let you know that we're on board, rowing in the same direction. I'm the chair of the bike head committee here in Thompson, which wouldn't exist without you guys. So um, and Susan's hard work in particular. So thank you very much for that. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the, the draft as we understand understand it exists right now, and then some of our concerns um, in terms of making something happen on our lot at the corner of Main and Elm. Um, so I think if we can like imagine ourselves back in 2015, we are just coming to this meeting and we are saying, thank you so much. This is awesome. We now have a buildable lot. Let's go do it. Um, but things have really changed since that time. Um, I just wanted to share, share this article with you. This was from last week. The, the title is, Why Some Developers Are Intentionally Delaying Housing Production Inside Maine's Old Mills. So if I can just send that around. <clears throat> 
So, so just to summarize, um, Nathan Zanton's got this great project up at the Con Continental Mill in Lewiston. They've done some great projects down in Biddeford. And his basic message to the legislature is, we can't do these projects anymore because construction costs have doubled in the past 10 years. So they were doing construction at $115 a square foot in 2015, and now they're doing it for $236 a square foot. They don't even have to build the building. They're just doing the inside of the, of the thing. So, um, so here we are in 2024, and we're looking at the good work that you guys have done, and we're going, we don't think we can build anything because there's um, in the current draft a four unit cap for building and just crunching the numbers, we're thinking it doesn't work. Um, so that's, I guess, the bad news. Um, the good news is I think that um, with some tweaks and we're really open to like lots of outcomes here. I, we don't have a particular, um, well, I've, I've been through several iterations of a vision of, of what might work there, but at this point, we're not tied to a particular outcome um, in terms of what it might look like, um, but we really think it's important for the town to have something on that lot. Um, as you're coming up Main Street, I was just doing this again today, coming up Main Street, you come around, you cross the bridge and you come around the corner, you're just looking at this big empty lot. It's like it would be so cool to have something, something there. So um, if I could share a few pictures with you, um, I think um, that might be helpful. Oops. So I know these the folks out in virtual land might not be able to see these unless you have some special trick you do, but um, I've got a couple pictures here, excuse me. One and two. These are um, <clears throat> these are historic properties over on Federal Street in Brunswick. And um, as you know, Federal Street laid out in the early 19th century. Um, they had, I believe, a deed covenants on all of those properties that essentially did what you guys are doing. It was a form-based type of thing. They had setback requirements. They had, um, they may have even had color requirements. I'm not sure, but what we've ended up with is what we all know as Federal Street today. Um, those images are two buildings. One, I believe, is eight units, and the other is 10 units. And so I was playing this little game with my wife the other day in the car going by houses. How many units do you think are in that house? And you've got these really, you know, pretty dense um, multifamily buildings, eight and ten units, right next to single family homes. And to the casual observer, it all looks the same. Um, so I guess we're coming back to you and and saying we um, we love the work you've done. It looks nice. Um, we're concerned that when we get to the end, we may not be able to build on our lot. And that's, we think, isn't the outcome that any of us are, are hoping for. So um, we are hopeful that we can work with you to come up with a solution to figure out or to ensure that we can, when, um, when we get recode across the line, that we can actually do something. Um, and build a building on our lot that contributes to all of the all of the things that you're trying to do with Rico. So I think, in a nutshell, that's that's it. Yeah. Thank you again for your work and for listening to us. Um, we have spent quite um, some time thinking of a variety of scenarios. I know we don't have the time to expose that here, but since you have been giving us some options and. I want to just mention that we have thought of every single thing that you have asked us to consider and that we are facing some challenges that are unique to this property and one of them um, in particular I wanted to mention is the location makes it for a place where people can be interested for a variety of reasons because it's close to downtown etc but it also is a screaming noise 
So one of the options that was given to us was so I think of multiple dwellings, building, I even dream actually that the way that I imagined this lot was building houses, like single unit for families that will be more like our home, you know, or perhaps like my own in-laws or my mother who live with us. And then we just had this memory of this moment when we were about to buy this house and we were crossing the bridge and the agent was coming up with all of these scenarios that would explain why her house was cheaper than she would have expected. And she said, well, it is a very loud location. And luckily, we are a little bit further apart from that corner. But when we started to think of like, okay, would we did today pay for, I don't know, whatever would cost us to build, which is not going to be less than 500 or six hundred thousand dollars per unit at the current prices. Mm -hmm. Would we pay that amount of money for a single unit in that location in that corner? Um, and the answer is probably not. I mean, those kind of houses are in in hubs and in locations that are way more secluded than we what we have here. Mm -hmm. So what we are thinking more is a multi unit in which there are people, like young people, who want to walk up to work, you know, mm -hmm. or perhaps you know older single people as well. But um, not necessarily the kind of thing that you have suggested in the past. I, I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. You've given us some things to think about. Um, I'm not sure if uh, you have a sense of what would make it work. Um, you know, it's like we have the way the code is drafted is the sense of what fits in with the character of the of the neighborhood. And I totally hear you in terms of the image or the appearance of a single family home can be deceptive. There can be many more units in there, but um, at the same time, there is the size of a lot is also a limitation. Do you have a sense of what you... So um, I have come full circle several times maybe in my in my thinking about this I started with an idea for a house that I was trying to kind of shoehorn into the village building um, which is one of the two typologies allowed um, in our in our spot um, and more recently I've been looking at the row house um, I would never have come up with that design on my own. I'm, it's a, a three-story, uh, flat-roofed structure, and I just have, would not have come up with that on my own because looking around, I don't see a lot of buildings like that around Dobson, actually. Um, so, but that's what I've been considering lately. If you cross the bridge over to Brunswick, there are a number of examples of Italianate duplexes. They're basically boxes, uh, big squares, tall, and um, sort of, um, you know, the same dimension on each side, but they're, they're duplexes. So I'm imagining something that appears like a duplex. You drive by and you say, oh, that looks like a duplex. Um, and uh, actually, a lot of those in Brunswick are located on corner lots. Um, but it, anyway, um, so it would appear to be a duplex. It would probably be a three-story thing, but it would have more units inside. Of it, and that would be the, the quiet part. Not everybody would need to know. And probably no one would really know because it would look like a duplex. Gotcha. So that's that's sort of where my thinking is now, but we're we're open to the possibilities. The, the, the duplexes that you just mentioned, where I'm, I'm curious, where where would I see this? So you've got three right on the end of Park Row, you've got the Schofield Whittier House, which is, and then uh, the, I get the order wrong, the Pumpkin House. It's not over there. Okay. So the, these are duplexes. Um, there's one on Jordan Avenue. Um, there are, um, there, I believe, is that's that's good. I just did. I could do a drive by and just yeah. get a bit. So, so I mean, the same, same sort of, same sort of geometry, the same sort of dimensions um, that would appear, you know, it would have two doors you know, in the front. So you think duplex, mm -hmm. um, but you would probably have three units stacked on each side or something like that. 
Thanks. Any other questions for Brian and Nadia? We... Okay. Thank you. And thanks for the for the article and the visuals. You know, it's amazing to, you know, with the increased cost of construction right now that construction does continue. <laughs> it is amazing. Um, right here in Topsom as well, um, there are projects planned. Um, and I, I believe there's a new moratorium in Brunswick. Is that, did I read something recently about, or is that an old article I was coming across? A six month moratorium. I know. Okay. I think there might be one being proposed, but I don't think it's happening. Yeah. 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 That had to do with, with the uh, expedited permitting. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Trying to fast track. Mm -hmm. They're trying to fast track. They have, they have so many building developments in, in the queue. That That's right. Track. That's right. Okay. So thank you. And we're going to be moving on with our agenda, which is. Okay, looking at the items of recode in terms of the updates we have, um, we've had two workshops since our last meeting. We had a workshop on February 20th, um, which was supposed to be held with Leslie. She unfortunately had a, a family emergency and could not come, but we went ahead and, and met and focused quite a lot on there were some, we focused quite a lot on the zoning boundaries. Mm -hmm. Was there any other name? I think that's the names. That, the, the, name, the names of the zones, but that that really started to click in um, the it, the uh, the Nickel later. Yeah, later. Yeah, the March 5th workshop, which, which was attended by Leslie. Mm -hmm. So on the 20th, um, you know, others can chime in on, on your take on it, but we we had had an initial conversation about looking at some boundary zone changes, and we heard quite a lot of you know sort of arguments against any changes, and then we looked at it again um, in this February twentieth workshop, and we looked at it in the context of the whole um, map of Topsom Center Recode. And we started to make some connections between the um, Union Park Road, Road and Topsom Fair Mall 2. Those two zones have some similarities. And we, we, we had conversations and comments around the table a couple of times. And, and we actually had a shift happen where we realized that both of these zones were to some extent transition zones between, in, in one case, between a commercial zone, retail zone, and a residential zone. And in the other, there's also a, a residential zone behind it. Um, but, but there's, you know, it will be a, a transition between the upper village. So we, we focused on that and Mark luckily was with us that day and helped us to see that there are certain properties that don't fit what we were looking at. And, and then Leslie helped us to see when she came on the 5th of March, she had actually been looking at this as a different zone than the upper village in the first place. That, that was a surprise. I had realized, you know, we've we've gone through some changes over the course of this project as we as things took shape. But that was one of her initial proposals. And so we're actually going back to one of her recommendations. Um, and there is a map that's now available um, where where the two zones are carved out. And in that second um, meeting on March 5th, we actually created some, Le Leslie was suggesting that instead of having zones named for specific geographical areas, we're keeping that in areas where people are very familiar with lower village, middle village, upper village, but where there's a, a zone, you know, like Topsom Fairmall 2, 
for this, this this new area. We're looking even at the annex. We had had some conversation trying to find a different name for the annex. And what we settled upon in this March 5th um, workshop was mixed residential. Seems to work, mixed re residential. And the Crooker district is master planned district. That's the nature of that whole, whole district. It's master planned district. We still may call it by its old familiar name, but gradually over time, there may be other districts that will come under that rubric as well. And then the um, Topsom Fair Mall will be commercial mixed use. And was there anything else? I think that was the Topsom Fair Mall too. Two was the transitional. With transitional, yeah. And transitional mix. That's transitional talking. mix. That's right. Transitional mix. So that would be what we used to call Topsom Fair Mall Two, and this new chunk that's on Union Park Road. So we we actually made some decisions there, and it's here being recorded in the minutes and on. So we have to send it to the actually absolutely. We'll not pop. Yeah. We'll get that. Thank you. So it, it was in the second workshop on the on March fifth with Leslie that we actually we went over some things where she needed some sort of guidance before the final revisions and. She had provided some um, illustrations of boulevard streets that would give some flexibility. There was some question about what that would look like if there's a connector um, created by main DOT through that district. Um, and we all agreed that those illustrations looked just fine. Um, there was some, um, some, you know, Discussion. There was some discussion of drive-throughs. We've gone um, from one um, sort of extreme of saying, you know, that only certain kinds of drive-throughs are allowed, and those would be very limited. So that there's no uh, limitation now on the type, but there's one per block. I think is what we we agreed on, and that those would exist on the new arterial and on one on one ninety six. Those are basically limited there. So and this the rear and those two. Right. That that the drive throughs would happen around the rear. Mm -hmm. And apparently then the feedback we got was that that would not be any kind of problem. Um, so materials we did some sh shifting on materials. It was quite a good discussion on um among those who understand materials, um, that the materials have changed over time. There's some materials like um, wood composite that had been in minor materials, and I think that there's more flex flexibility now. So that will all be reflected in the revisions that are coming out probably by the end of today. Am I missing anything there? I think that's pretty complete principal, principal use table uh, changes that were suggested by Julie yes and also discussed with that. so Leslie talked about sending those to us tonight and then we decided that we would wait the planning boards are going to be reviewing those on the 28th so we're going to wait and make sure that we get all the revisions the way that we want them before we send it out into the world. Right. So yeah, that planning board meeting will be a um, one to take note of on March 28th. Okay, so that takes us through. I'm sorry, I just want to make a very short comment. Um, I'm on the things that we have such in the process and the process of this. I think go to the microphone. Yes, it's been and it's been turned off. Just wait a second. 
since you are discussing some latest changes in Sony in particular, um, at some point we suggested that one potential solution for a conundrum here might be actually moving up the boundary that is now determining what is called the middle village, which was not in the original comprehensive plan, um, a little bit higher. So it covers our lot and as well as some of the other multifamily units that are already in place in that area um, and includes us in the lower village. Because if we are part of the lower village, we wouldn't have the density cap that is now established in the middle village. Um, and since this is a corner lot that is surrounded by all of these multifamily units, we thought that that might be a potential solution to the question that would not require that the density cap and that you want to keep it at, it at this point would have to be changed in order to accommodate us. So I just wanted to put that there because I don't know if you had the opportunity to discuss that possibility, but that We actually did discuss that at the office hours with Brian. Um, I think that was discussed there. Um, and, you know, there are no, the, the buildings around you, the maximum is four units um, at the moment. Um, so, at the moment, the the revision is going to reflect the current boundaries. There will be opportunity to comment and you know to make requests. But at the moment, we're we're what we're doing is considering what's actually in the plan. The, what's in the plan is an illustration. It's not a prescription for what we do. It's an illustration of what's possible. And the the road has shifted to go right through your property. In fact, so it's an it's an awkward thing to create a park in front of the church. That's what 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 is the illustration. So it's um you know that's that's not part of what we're doing. That's simply a, a, an illustration that was picked up because people do want parks. They want pocket parks. Um, you know, people want places to to meet and mingle. Um, and so the illustration was at least partly for that purpose not sort of a, a zoning boundary. Um, but we hear you, we hear you, and the, the revision that is coming out at the moment is not going to reflect the change in that boundary. Thanks. So in terms of those two workshops, any further thoughts or, um, I'm sure there was a lot more um, covered. Um, okay, moving on. Um, update on the planning board and recode cleanup update. We've just heard that the uh, 28th is going to be the use table. Yes. So I'm hoping that that is going to be our last code cleanup workshop on this building. And we will be looking at the use table and the dimensional tables and the ordinance too, and just reviewing those um, and probably, hopefully, kind of running through um, the ordinance just to make sure we've captured all the revisions that we intended to, right? So I get them all done. Great. Okay, any comment on that? The, uh... The public session tied to the all these meetings, all these uh, planning board workshops. The public session that we're going to have in May. Yeah, I guess that's my question. When that's going to be. I in think May. that's really supposed to be for Thompson Center, isn't it? Isn't that the idea of the public meeting? Yeah, sure I mean, it, <laughs> yes. The one for the select was your night, so you can well, that where you want. Right. I mean, the one for you in Park specifically. Oh yes. Oh, that. Um, I, thought, I didn't know when that was coming. That that's public hearing is next week. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Sorry, about. wait a minute. That's that's this week. This this <laughs> week. Okay. What week am I? Yes, it's this Thursday. Thank public you. Public hearing. Have yes. they settled on a proposed solution for that? We have, have a bunch of proposed mm -hmm. amendments um, to and, try to make that one more. And there have been four workshops, I think, mm -hmm. yes. on that project. Yes. Yeah. Plus one more coming. <laughs> well, and this will be the public hearing, right? On proposed amendments. Yeah. 
So that's this, this Thursday, which is yeah. what, like the 14th? Okay, great. Anything further before we move on? Um, yeah, this next item, uh, review of milestones and timeframe now through May 2024. Um, I have to confess I'm a little fuzzy on this. I'm going to have to rely on <laughs> the clarity of some of you. We've just, as of today, uh, been given a date of May 1st for a workshop with the select board. Second, exactly. second. Thank you. Um, so that would be the first select board workshop in the month. The town meeting is the 22nd. It's always a Wednesday, right? Yes. 22nd. Okay. So between now and, and we're talking about having the town meeting be at least a kickoff so for our public process, the, the um, and of the, the whole RECO project, both town center and the cleanup update. And once, now that we have this revision as of tonight or tomorrow, we will need to have um, some workshops with the developers and, and folks who have, you know, participated in the process um, to see the red line and to see um, how that sits with them. Um, we haven't scheduled any of those, but I'm assuming that, what, what do we need to do in April? We need to have uh, a workshop on, on both, we, we need to have, we can't have, we, so we can use this May 2nd workshop for just recode if we want. Sure. The question becomes what, you know, we really, we were looking at two brand new members of the select board and thinking that, and they seemed interested to have a workshop that this sees recode in the context of the whole comprehensive plan. Um, we're looking now at not bringing this project to town meeting until May 2025. I haven't, I have to just let you know, I haven't fully digested what our time frame is going to be between now and that, but we're just looking now at the next two months, basically. And do we, perhaps we just focus on the workshops on the red line with the folks who are waiting for that to come out. Um, I think that might be enough. And then the, the select board workshop on the first, a uh, second. Because we need to allow them enough time once they have that. To yeah, it would, it would be at least a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. When when you say I'm referring to recode, I thought we were talking going to be uh, with the uh, with the select board. I thought yeah. we were dealing with Thompson Center cells all of them. Well, we we could, but we had talked to with the select board. We had talked about actually doing a workshop with them to share with them what's in the plan, the whole comprehensive plan, and as a way of contextualizing, we could nice. and delving into you no, know, just absolutely just top some center. Code as a, a the reason that we're doing that it addresses but not recode for the rest of the that's right not okay. the update okay. Okay. so we are right. yeah so we're, we're the talking same. about just the top session that's okay. right Andy has it. yeah Andy go for it yeah I, um I just want to make sure and I think you have this built in at least you've talked about it, that we give the developers enough time to absorb um these changes and look through them and i don't think two weeks is enough time i i, I think it's got to be at least three weeks um just because they're schedules and stuff and i 
Um, I like the idea of continuing the workshops and focusing on to make sure that we get the the um, backing, the support from the developers and, and other people in the community too, um, and just take that time because I, I do think May of 2025 is a realistic date as long as we continue to work um, with the general public and the developers and um, just make sure we get their buy-in, I guess, before we we uh, do anything else. And I, I think uh, what Wesley's done and what she's going to provide us is a, is a really good base to go and maybe very close to what we end up with. But I think it's something that they need to absorb because they've been – watched us in bits and pieces over the last six months since our first workshop. And I just think it will yeah. be to our advantage to make sure we give them enough time. And I think two weeks is a little short, but that's just my opinion. If we were to hold something in the week, the first week in April, that would give people three full weeks, assuming that we get it out to them within the next a couple of days. Do you think three weeks is fair? I, I do. And actually, I'm going to be there the first week in April, too. So I, I, I'd be able to attend in person. Um, okay. And if it isn't, at least it will be, the, it'll give them enough time to absorb most of it. And we're going to have some follow up issues, I'm sure, too. So I think three weeks is, is adequate, in my, again, in my opinion. Yeah. And we, we're, we're going to notify others to like um, the general public and other people who have been and come to meetings and things like that, not just the developers who we've talked to. I think everybody I so. who has expressed interest at this point, and there are, there are some folks who have emailed, um, folks who have attended the public hearings. I mean, the, the public <laughs> workshop, first public workshop that was very well attended. So I think all of those folks will be notified. Um, and it, will, I, it won't be, you know, it's all going to be a red line, right? So it's it's not going to be hard to um, to focus on where the changes are. Well, that's, right, that's, that's, a, that's the advantage for sure. Joe, you asked me a question. Oh, I, I just want basically that was it. My assumption is that they're going to be looking for how the changes that they suggested being made were in fact made. Uh, so it's not like they're going to be looking at a, an entire new document, which should correct should mean correct. three ought to be enough. Absolutely so correct. Let me let me just check if Angela, if you were satisfied with it. If you're if you were answered, I think so. But I'm also wondering when we're gonna just sort of you know put it out to the general public. Like, do we still have a email list of people who are interested in planning issues? Like, when is that happening? What we talked about is using the uh, town meeting as the launch of the public engagement process with this draft. Okay, so and this is like preliminary to that, people who have been involved in it. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, great, and Rick. Yeah, I guess that's where my getting concerned, the line's getting a little blurred here about how broad the distribution, are we giving the red line version, and then are we incorporating it revising yet another revision before going to the broad distribution with a clean copy and that it's a it's a lengthy process you know we have to get a little focused here in order to make that happen by may 22nd my sense is that this is a conversation with folks who have, you know, had very specific issues around very specific parts of the code. And the conversation is, this is what you, you know, we heard you, this is what we've done. And, and how does that sound? My, my sense is we are not making further revisions at this point. This is the revised draft 
at this stage. There'll be another round of revisions after the public comment, after some of there'll be open houses and we will gather comments there. But my sense is that this is going to be the draft that will go to the into the public engagement process, the open houses. Mark, you had a I kind of follow up on Angel and Rick's comments. I think it might make sense to when we get the latest draft from Leslie, put it on the website so anyone can see it that wants to and have this chance to absorb it for about a month. Then the select board kind of get the, the preview. So it kind of respects their position as far as leading the government. And then the town gets it gets rolled out to them that night of town meeting, then start having these other meetings. Um, and probably don't, again, yet yeah, I agree, don't make, only because we're going to kill our budget, no further re revisions from Leslie until now we have a lot more comment from a lot of people and put right. it all together into one. Right. Um, so as much as it's tempting to say, let's try to hammer up more things with a certain group before, I think yeah. we're better off for the public process wise to, to take that version, give people a bunch of time to absorb it, and then first go to the select board, then go to the town meeting group. And my sense of what's going to happen at the town meeting is simply an announcement, not necessarily. Right. I mean, it, it could be like the next week it gets posted on the website, um, but, but that we start a process of planning big open houses, you know, you know two or three yeah. big open houses to gather comment. But, okay, so the red line. <laughs> So what Leslie is going to provide us today or tomorrow, I had not thought that was going to be posted on the website. Is that, but it, everything's been posted on the website. I mean, people, yeah, each revision, all of those documents. And people have care enough to yeah. take the time to read it. That's right, different. that's right. But the, the, the hearing back from the folks who took the time to really delve in um, I think planning a workshop with them will sort of bring some closure to that process. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about is doing that during that first week of April. The only thing that may appear to the public is that the developers are getting a special cut at this. So that's, I think, the advantage to waiting till after at least the select board meeting to start doing follow-up things in particular groups. Uh-huh. Does that make sense to folks? Since we're not yeah. going to make any more you know, revisions, revisions until later. Right? Okay, so we we can relax. <laughs> <laughs> and, un and unfortunately, we will be saying goodbye to Julie. Um, so she won't be part of the closure of that process, but we'll be you'll be across town. So <laughs> <laughs> we can invite you to special. <laughs> And we still have a month to keep lobbying her. <laughs> Absolutely. Any further closure on this? I, I want to make sure that everybody's clear. Clarification. Yeah. So that um, as um, the red line version will appear on the website between now and yeah. uh, the town meeting. Right. After the announcement of the town meeting. It seems to me it would be good not to put out something with red lines. And, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. The, the, the final to... revision will be yeah. yeah. That's what will yeah. So the, the red line will be taken down. The what will be there is the revised version that's going to go into the public process. Yeah. Make sense, everyone. Okay. Yeah. I see nods. Good. Mm -hmm. Andy said we had to back up. Okay. Um, comment? Yeah, I know it's kind of tied into the same topic. We're moving on to the next topic. It, it'd be like, so the question is between now and the May roll out, what needs to happen? And I think we need to focus more on, you know, have a, have a workshop ourselves. Like how are we going to handle public feedback? How are we going to not talk about planning? planning events or anything, but just like, okay, how are we going to receive, digest, and implement some of the feedback um, so that 
we can because that's going to be one of the first questions that's asked. Yeah. I, I don't want to be sitting in front of somebody at town meeting and be like, ah, we're going to figure that out later. We'll come over. We're going to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm hearing is we've already revised this several times. This has gone through many drafts and revisions. We're rolling it out to the public, a sneak peek in May with the opportunity for bigger public conversations. To what end are those conversations being held? Like as, as far as we're explaining what we've done, we're showing what we've done, but are we really, is it really about input at this point? Yes. All right. And then okay. what happens if there are, there's serious, well, like the info we're getting here, you know, and in more of that, you know, let's just say we have other homeowners who have vision for their property that they would like to do things that are not allowed in the repo. The one thing that, that we might want to hold again is the top some center property owners session. We planned one, it had to be canceled, and then we, we held one. It was not well attended. Um, we had a few very interesting conversations um, with, I think, three or four property owners, but we could hold another session um, with just that, that group um, between now and It's no, so discouraging. Yeah. To there were there but, were twice as many of us as there were, there were. property owners. Yeah. I mean, and I think I mean there's yeah. Well, let's talk about the possibilities in terms of how we receive comment. The the draft is going to be up on the website. And one of the ways that was very helpful in receiving questions and comments on the comprehensive plan update was by email and to have those emailed in on the town website. That option is set up now, right? We could in our materials, in our communications process, so let people know that this is, that there will be open houses, I'm guessing two, um, but that other than those open houses, the way to engage with us is through comment on the, the town website citing a, a particular section of the code with questions or comments and then you know having we, we will have all kinds of illustrations um you know posters of the code and you know what's the what the vision is and People can comment. We were set up for comments at the property owners session um, for people to actually give us their questions and their comments. It didn't happen as envisioned, but but it could at an open house. But does anybody have any suggestions about how to do it differently than that? Because those are the two things I can think of in terms of questions on the website and then in person. In addition to the email option, we've got the, the website has the capability we can set up a form. Um, so we could have a click on this button to give feedback. We could actually have the form have certain predefined areas to help direct the comments to certain parts of the yeah. repo and thing. Yeah. We we gathered comments not exactly in that way, but during the uh, update. update. Yeah. Which uh you know, they vary quite a bit, but some of them were quite useful. They were. They and were. It, also with, with the property owners, maybe the thing to do is just simply, uh, Julie, you have a master list of the property owners. We could, we could as a courtesy, send out a, an announcement that the revised draft will be on the website alerting them uh, to it. Yeah, um, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. The planning department has a survey monkey subscription now too, and I don't know if that would be helpful huh. to do a survey. Sometimes you can do a very open-ended. I mean, you can use survey monkey to get open-ended feedback, but you do need email addresses, and we don't have. Well, we could do a link to it on the website, or oh, put out a 
supplier with a QR code or something. Okay. To it. Okay. Good ideas. Captured in the minutes. <laughs> I get tired. Um, I am loath to think about a survey at this point. I think what we want is maybe a form designed, mm -hmm. you know, to capture people's thoughts or questions or complaints, you know, suggestions about mm -hmm. specific sections of the code. Um, and I mean, I remember during the update process, there were there were a lot, mm -hmm. and we went over every one and discussed them. And as you said, some were very useful in in helping us revise the. The difference this the time, text. I think, is that uh, that was basically a visioning process, yeah. and and this is considerably more technical uh, and dense. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd be surprised if we get, it's going, it's going to take people with a certain uh, either high interest level or, or knowledge of, yeah. of the body of work to, right. to get much input, I think. That's but right. that doesn't mean we shouldn't ask for it. Yeah. I mean, that's... But, yeah, I would say, but when we did have the first property owners session, which was the targeted invite session, you guys are very specific and very, you know, straight feedback on that. The one that we all did this room mm -hmm. with the multiple mm -hmm. members developers. Mm -hmm. uh, the first open session. Yes. We got a lot of general comments, but we didn't get a lot on the actual code. So it, it wasn't. Well, we didn't have a code. Well, we, we we did, but but that was that was not we weren't successful in creating the comments connected with the code, which is why we created office hours and were able to zero in on what parts of the code people had questions about. Angela, yeah, I just wanted to say I think I agree with the trying to get feedback from meetings and email um, things, compile them and bring them back to our group to vet them rather than trying to answer them one off. Um, right. And right. also as a property owner <laughs> in the district, I think it's important right. for us to reach out to property owners, but I don't believe property owners, you know, have, you know, uh, we have a higher threshold to engage than everyone else in town because it's the comprehensive plan for the town of Topsom. So I think we've done a good job, including property owners. We plan to follow up with anyone who's been engaged with us. And then we're just like everyone else. We're residents of the town. Good point. So I think we've wrapped up this section on recode and the update. Um, Let's move on to liaison updates. And let me just ask Angela, were you able to connect with the Conservation Commission? I'm just gonna say, I don't know where the last month went and no, I'm sorry, but it is on my list and it just disappeared on me. So hopefully by next meeting, I will have something to say. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so I'm loath to open this up, but I just want to make sure between now and the town meeting, the only definite thing we have on our agenda is the May 2nd select board update, which will have at least a couple of workshops to work on preparing for that and making a decision what we do. But other than that, we're going to be posting. Um, we are not going to have a session with anyone um, because we're going to wait for the, the select board session. And then and the, the red line will be available, but we're not going to have, have a meeting about that. We'll have a meeting about the red line with the is it all for those, right? The first week in April, is that what we're saying? I'm 
the question now. Well, I'm just wondering because what I'm hearing is that we should not appear to be giving special treatment to. And I just want to be sure because I, I may my I may have confused myself in the process. Um, we're we're posting the red line on the website. Mm -hmm. Are we going to hold a session on the first week of April? Just scroll back to what I tell you. That's the way I understood that we left it. But if you're raising the question now, should we? I think that part of it comes down to what did we say to them? Because I, I which I don't. Recall. I think we did tell them that. I thought we followed. Followed. But the question yeah. is the timing. The question is the timing. And what Mark is suggesting is that we not get ahead with the developers of what we're doing with the select board. That's that what I sense. hear. Am yeah. I am I right on right. that? Um, yeah. Because we're not intending to make any more changes That's correct. to the draft before it gets rid out to everyone in general. Mm -hmm. But I think Rick makes a good point that you probably do want to have an upcoming meeting where you lay out what the public process is going to be over the next two to three months. And then probably going to have a deadline when the public process is going to end, and then you'll have collected things and you for the next revision and things. Um, but just to get rooms lined up and people's calendars, it's probably good to say, you know, these dates in May, these dates in June, you know, here's what's going to happen. Right. And, you know, we have at this point, we have a longer time frame for handling that um, than we had anticipated. We were talking about January. So we have. We have four extra months. Um, although I think that most of our work is going to be happening in the fall, probably, is my guess. I was going to suggest that because summer, it's hard to get people's attention. Right, right. Are we okay? Good. We'll clear it up in a minute. <laughs> so, with that, um, I think we can adjourn. Unless anyone else has any items to Dave, do you wanna? No. We're glad to have you with us. We'll, you know, let's take some time and read the rewrite. Read the code. Uh, is that like I guess my question on that is, is I've seen on the center of the world there he is, but the rest of it all the the foil plate and all that, is that all full ready to go as well? It's not quite ready to go. It's going to be soon. Will that be in the, in the draft you're sending out? The draft that we're going to get over the next couple of days will not include that. It's just going to be the Topsum Center recode. And there's some work that's going to be done with the planning board at, at the end of the month on the 28th. And then that work will be incorporated and that other portion will be rolled out. So one last question. Yeah. When is, when is Julie's last day? The 12th. April 12th. April 12th. That would be the only thing I could think of as a, if we wanted to notify the developers to push to get a review meeting for the 12th, for the continuity of discussions and clarity and planning before that shift occurs. And that may be a reasonable rationale <laughs> for I, I agree <laughs> thank you for that yeah yeah and that's because i i think you know my sense is the select board you know three members have been privy to what's been happening two folks are new but i have a feeling that the input that we're and the process we're trying to bring to closure is a valuable one, and they will see it as a valuable process. Thank you. Okay. So we will have a meeting with the developers. We will. The 12th day. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And I think I think we're talking about that first week in April. Um, and we do have the 19th next Tuesday, four to five, as our workshop when we, I think we could maybe firm that up. We'll have time to, you know, inform all of the folks who have 
participated in that kind of intense, you know, specific way um, to come to a session. So we're 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 looking at probably a, and we've we've done it kind of middle of the day. We've done kind of a a one to three kind of time frame. And that has worked well for folks as long as they have time to plan for it. Just for planning purposes, I mean, this room is booked in the middle of the day on the third and fourth, Wednesday and the Thursday. Middle of the day. Yeah. Okay. Like a 11 to 1 or so. But we could do maybe like a two to four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll talk more on the 19th. 19th is the next function. Yeah, the 19th will be our workshop. Okay, ready to adjourn? 536. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.